Good morning. This is Marshall Davis. This episode began as a suggestion from a listener in North Carolina. He asked me to talk about the use of the word Christ. The word Christ means different things to different people. The fundamentalist Christ is very different than a liberal Protestant Christ. A Roman Catholic means something very different by the word Christ than a Quaker does. A Hindu, who might use that term, means something very different than a Baptist would mean. The term itself is a title found in the Bible which means simply anointed one. And it is used in the Old Testament in reference to priests and kings who were anointed. In time, it came to be equivalent to the term Messiah. I use the word Christ to refer to ultimate reality expressed in the first century Galilean carpenter and preacher known as Jesus of Nazareth. I use it to refer to both the human and the divine dimension of Jesus. A friend of mine who is the pastor of the Methodist Church here in New Hampshire where we attend makes a point of using the terms Jesus and Christ differently. He uses Jesus to refer to the human being who lived and died in the first century and he uses the word Christ to refer to the eternal Christ, the universal and pre-existent Logos, the Word. He's not alone in making a distinction between Jesus and Christ. Some theologies say that the man Jesus became the Christ at some point in his life. Early Christians who believed this were called adoptionists. They believed that the divine Christ entered into the human Jesus at some point at his baptism or at his resurrection or ascension. I use the word Christ for both the human being Jesus and the eternal Logos or word. I intentionally do not make a distinction between the human and the divine aspects, the mortal and the immortal, the universal and the particular. Christ is non-dual. Once we start dividing up Christ into parts, then we are in the midst of duality. That's where Christian theology took a wrong turn, I think, when they started talking about the two natures of Christ and the Chalcedonian Creed in the 5th century. Once we start carving up Christ, then we are firmly entrenched in the dualistic mindset. The non-dual Christ is exactly that, not two, not two natures, even if you qualify that double nature as combined in a hypostatic union, as the creed says. Now, I know I'm sounding theological here, using $2 theological terms, but bear with me. This is going to be the end of the theological terms, because... Christ is not theological. Christ is not theology. Christ is experiential. That's where evangelicals get it right, kind of. They talk about a personal relationship with Christ, which is all right as far as it goes, but we can go further. Personal relationships are dualistic. They're all about the personal psyche the ego. A personal relationship with Christ is our personal ego having a relationship with a heavenly ego that we identify as Jesus Christ. But relationships are by nature dualistic. You have to have two to have a relationship. Reality is non-dual. Christ is non-dual. You can't have a relationship with the non-dual. Separate beings can have relationships 
with other separate beings, but one can't have a relationship with being, being itself, the ground of being. Now, once again, let me say I'm not against people talking about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The, the personal, egoic aspect of me still has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So I understand very much where evangelicals are coming from. But that is just part of the story. There is so much more. We can go so much deeper than a personal relationship. We can become one with Jesus Christ when the ego drops away, when it is seen through. In fact, we are now one with Christ. Christ is experiential, but not in a dualistic relational sense. Christ is experiential in a non-dual, unitive sense. I use the word Christ to communicate non-dual union with God. Traditional Christianity talks about being one with God through Christ. And sometimes I'll use that phrase as well when speaking to or preaching to Christians. Christian, traditional Christian theology sees Christ as the mediator between God and humans. But mediation proposes, presupposes separation. And in reality, there is no separation. Christ as mediator is just an idea that the mind gets a hold of in order to try to bridge the gap that it created between God and human. When one is united with God, one in Christ, there is no gap. The duality is also seen in how Christians use the name of Christ in prayer. It is thought that if we add the magic words, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, Amen, at the end of a prayer, that's kind of like adding a stamp to a letter before we put it in the slot at the post office. We think that without the name of Christ affixed, then the prayer will not be delivered. To the heavenly throne room. But in reality, God is present here now. God is non-dual. Christ is non-dual. We are non-dual. There is no separation to be bridged or mediated. Christ is the word I use to communicate that unicity. I think the term Christ serves the purpose better than the word God, which is even less well defined. Christ is the union of human and divine together as one. Essentially, eternally, always one. Divine and human are two sides of a coin. Jesus on one side of the coin, Christ on the other, you could say. God on one side, human on the other. There's no such thing as a one-sided coin. You cannot have one side without the other side. The two sides are one whole, and you can't even tell where one side ends and the other side begins same way with reality. Reality is one. Duality is unicity. There is no divine without human, no good without he evil, no high without low, no wet without dry, no light without dark, no saint without sinner. 
Non-dual reality includes all seemingly different opposites. Two sides of reality do not really exist. They are the same coin. I call that coin Jesus Christ. Put Jesus on one side and God on the other if you want. For me, the term Christ unites the two into one. This is the nature of reality. And therefore, it is our nature. All duality is one reality. All the dualities that we perceive in the world are just the artificial differences that our minds have created, like the two sides of the coin. All is one. This non-dual reality is communicated in Scripture. In those passages that speak about Christ being all and in all. Colossians chapter 3 says, for example, you stripped off the old self and have put on the new self, which is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created it, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The Apostle Paul sees the eschatological kingdom of God as being a time when God will be all and in all. The letter to the Ephesians speaks of God as one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the origin of the concept of the omnipresence of God. Omnipresence is just another way of saying that God is equally present everywhere. If, that mean, if that's true, that means that earth and heaven are one. Heaven and hell are one. Try and get your mind around that. Which of course you can't. It's beyond the mind. Ideas about God and Christ are just thoughts in the mind. Terms like Jesus and Christ are the way that the psyche has to make distinctions where none exist. We want to pin down the meaning of the term Christ. But when we do that, what we're actually trying to do is separate Christ from what is not Christ. That cannot be done. Theological and philosophical ideas are just ways that the, that the ego has to try to maintain some type of control and some type of individual existence for itself. The term Christ is one of those ideas. All, in reality, all is one. All is Christ. If you know, want to know what the term Christ means, the only way is to be one with Christ, which in fact we already are. To know that is what it means to be a Christian. And that is it for today. Grace and peace to you.